So I had a request to do another breakdown, but this time of one of the environments I created. And this right here is the locations, the Angel Crest Highway. And I'll do kind of like a little brief breakdown of how I did it. Nothing too crazy in detail, but a rough overview of my approach and then some of my methods for getting all the materials set up. Um, there were a lot of mixed maps, a lot of things like that. So that's all about opinion and personal preference, but I'll kind of go into a little bit of detail of what I did and how I did it. So this is the location. I created a lot of stills here. We have pavement with dirt, like drifting marks, um, a lot of grass and bushes in the mountains in the background, uh, little pebbles scattered with forest pack. We have some uh, displacement in the side mountains with grass on top of them. We have a guardrail. And, you know, I try to use reference, but then also not get too crazy in terms of whether or not it's as accurate as it should be. So as long as the idea was there, that was good enough for me. And as long as it looked pretty for visuals, that was it. So the first thing I did was I went and I gathered reference of the location in real life. And I didn't physically go there. I went to Google Maps. So I found the, the highway, the Angels Crest Highway. So I took a screenshot of overhead and then I took a larger image just to kind of know how the, uh, the, uh, the road works, where the mountains are, and so on and so forth. So I did that. And then I also went and collected reference from photographers that shot there. So uh, a lot of the stuff I got was from Webland, and he shot a lot of uh, stuff there. It, it was good reference to see how the, uh, the road marks are, how this is. Of course, you can see mine is different than his or different than the real life location. But the idea is similar. Of course, this just looks amazing and beautiful. So I don't have all these like layered of hilltops and such. But... I have something close enough to sell the concept of the location. So anyhow, with that said, I went to Google Maps, got a screenshot, tried to get an elevation terrain thing. That wasn't really much help for me. So just an overhead. And then started modeling. So first things first is I went and I created a spline. And I just kind of went down the middle, the yellow dividing line of the road. Then I did a loft with this rectangle. So in the United States, a highway road is about 9 to 10 feet wide. So this one, as you can see, I did 21 feet wide. That way, I just gave a little bit of a bleed for the uh, the center line. Then once I did the loft, I had my hero road. And then I'll unhide that layer. So hero road. So this is the road main. So let me see how far back I could go and have things. So once I had the road, then I started to uh, manually model off of it. So just your basic modeling techniques. I'll turn off the reference. So just shift dragging, extruding out, moving things around, and you know, looking at the reference because that is my go-to guide. So I could see where the the soil ends, the hilltops begin, things like that. So I try to get it close to the real deal, but of course, kind of taking creative liberty and trying to not spend weeks on working on one environment. So now that I had that, I went and, uh, let's see, uh, I did an edit poly. And there was a lot of, a lot of layers. So I'll turn, turn that off. Let's see what it, this did. I think that was just a matter of smoothing groups. That's exactly what it was. I uh, broke it all up into smoothing groups. So that way when I add the turbo smooth with the smoothing groups checked, it smooths it, but it still breaks it up into uh, sharp objects. And you'll see what I mean by that in a second. So, as you can see, these are, these are very hard edges. Then the little crevice that breaks up the line is a hard edge. So I use smoothing groups to create my own uh, separations of smoothing. After that, another edit poly. I selected the little crevice inside, added a little noise just to break it up and give a little bit of uh, imperfection so it's not a perfect straight line. Then I just did mesh select to deselect everything. I did turbo smooth. That way I could really subdivide things. And now what I do a lot with all my locations is I use a displace modifier. As you can see, there's a lot of them here. And what this is is just I use maps 
to allow myself to create kind of like a mountain detailed vibe. And so all it is is just it's an image and then you just add strength and you can make it go high or low. You go inside, outside, and I just keep layering them. And that's what I did was just layer upon layer upon layer to add all these little rocky imperfections to my surfaces. And as you can see right now, it's all still one object. They added a UVW map to give everything uh, a UV texture and a final, but you know, a very displacement map. Now, that's it. I never separated anything out. I just had one object that all the modeling applied to it. It's probably not the best workflow, but it's my workflow it works for me, and that's what I did. So then, after that, I started detailing the environment. So let's see what we have here. We have the guardrail, and I modeled a tileable section, and then that's just on a spline with a path, and then I finished modeling a little bit of a edge on the outside, and that was my guardrail. Nothing really crazy, but enough to have some detail. So far, I did that one close-up shot. I had some hardware on the back side. So that was that. Then we did forest pack scatter. So a lot of it is on the outside environment. And let's see, that's hidden right now. So these right here, actually, I couldn't do in forest pack because for whatever reason, it wasn't scattering them on my object. And I don't really care to spend too much time trying to figure out why I tried to look into it didn't really have much luck so I actually just used the uh, the V-Ray scatter the new V-Ray has a scatter feature so I just used that and then I combined it exported all the objects or yeah and collapsed them all so broke that out so there was that now let me see here I'll show you the outside mountains so there's one hero mountain and it's this one so I used view and I tried to go and grab the environment from this location. I don't know how accurate it is because I didn't get that beautiful layering that webs photography had. And as you can see, I also added some of my own displace modifiers to give even this mountain a little bit more detail in the mountain. And then I also went in and added my own mountains on the outside just to give me more depth in the horizon line for more layering with uh, atmosphere and such. And then, because I did forest pack scatter, I drew these shapes up, as you can see, and I broke up the mountain into different segments for all my scatter elements. Because forest pack, at some point, has a limitation of how many objects you could render, I just break them up into segments and just keep copying and copying and copying. My new method, however, is not even doing it like this. This was way too overkill. I just break it up into squares, and it works amazingly well for me to do that. And that way, the density consistency is all the same across the board. So that was that. That's how I created the mountains. Nothing too crazy. Nothing complex. So there's that. I'll hide those. So then we have our pullout area. Let's see what that is. Oh, it's kind of frozen for a second. So here we go. So... All right, so what I did was I used uh, Mega Scan assets and I just placed rocks and a lot of other elements like rocks and then some Evermotion or uh, Max Tree bushes and twigs. And this is just based on personal preference and opinion of where I want to put it, how I want to put it. And so as long as you break it through the environments and the materials are similar it, it blended quite well like i didn't really see anything really standing out in the obvious way that it was uh, a different object so that just kind of helps me add more natural elements like rocks and pebbles so that was that then i did v-ray decal and these i don't know if they'll even show up here we go so these are my tire marks these are my drift marks for the pavement and this one right here I actually went and I use Madcar for all my animations. So I went in Madcar and just for, I don't know, 4,000 frames, just kept doing different drifts and donuts and such. And that is what I generated an alpha map for these tire marks that have an accurate physical property in terms of tire diameter and the width between all of them. So that was my hero one. And then I had a few of these other little miscellaneous imperfection decals. Then I had some of these displacement decals, but I didn't really like the way they looked, so I actually never even used them on the final render. So that was that. Those are the miscellaneous texture elements. So now let's see what else we have. 
So that was my road, that was the guardrail, that was the mountains, we went over all that. So forest pack scatter. So the, we have the, we went over that one. So then we have the forest pack and this is the little pebbles that I scattered all across the ground here. And this is just your simple just scatter elements. Nothing really crazy there. Then I had uh, mountain trees and I know one of these really freezes up when I unhide it. And what these are just 2D planes that are just tree elements on the mountaintops in the background around the environment. Again, just taking artistic liberty and scattering what visually looked appealing. All right. Then we had our pull-out bushes, and these are just uh, more scatter elements up close near the uh, hero roundabout area. And I think it may have frozen, because one of these, once I unhide the forest pack, it takes a minute to show. So I'll just pause my video until it unhides. There we go, that took a minute. So what these were is uh, the pullout bushes. As you can see, I have shapes of where they, they go. And these are just bushes that are just kind of in the background. Some of them were independently placed, like these right here. And then others, again, are just scattered. So, and then I did a single line with a little expansion on the diameters to uh, kind of put bushes underneath the guardrail. So I did it on both sides. So those were the pullout bushes. And then I have my mountain scatter, which is another element and probably is going to take. Oh, no, there we go. It unhid. So these were all the forest pack scatters and all the mountains. As you can see, because the shapes were different, the density would change. So I've learned from this environment of how to do it better on my future environments. But in a nutshell, just a lot of scattering with uh, the bushes from... Mega scans from Max Tree, from Evermotion, just whatever looks good from whatever library you have, use it. So that's that. Now let me see if I could just hide these. Perfect. So we went over the guardrail, pull out. So that's that in terms of the modeling and scattering. So now I'm going to go over the material because that's where it actually, I took more time working on than the actual foundation of the scene. So I have this kind of wild V8 blend material, and I still use the uh, traditional material layout. I don't use the tree or whatever. This is the way I like to work. I know people have their own preference. This one's mine, and I have no desire to switch. So I'll kind of go over what I did here and explain my method of masking. Because again, I don't have a UV map in terms of like a unique painted one. And I didn't do any uh, substance paint or anything. Everything was done within 3D Studio Max, just using V-Ray v modifiers and those elements. So once this unfreezes, because it's loading all the maps, it's a lot of 8K texture maps. I guess I'll pause the video real quick. All right, so there we go. So the first things first is my hero ground texture. And this is the ground texture that is for the road. And that's just, you know, that's the base of my whole material. That's just pebbles, just whatever map uh, you want to use. Then I did the white lines for the road. So I took this material, just moved it back down. I did a V-Ray Comp Text, and all I did was brighten it and desaturate it. And that's what made the, the line white. And then I did the same thing with the yellow. So let's see here, just a yellow thing and RGB multiply made that yellow that gave me that color now The way I actually paint these on again. I don't have UV maps. I just use uh, V-Ray distance text So I have this object called white and if I go to my helpers and there's a lot of them So I'm gonna hide them and just kind of go over one thing at a time So I'll hide the so here we go white so I make these shapes and then I use them in the very distance text as alphas. And that's how I put all the textures where I want them. So the white is representing the white line. So now the yellow one is just a pure white color. So that's the alpha. And I put that, as you can see, on these things called yellow. So here's my yellow line. Same exact thing. Yellow. Then I went on the other one. Yellow too. 
And what this was is a, like a little overlay of a line getting painted on top of a line. I looked down Google Maps and it looked like the uh, DMV or Department of Transportation, when they were painting the lines, they kind of overlapped a little bit. So I just want to add that little natural human imperfection. So then we have the runoff. And this is this area right here. This is that whole area with all the drift marks and everything. So I have my uh, area called uh, runoff full. And this is my alpha map. This is the object that I used for the alpha map. So runoff, here we go. So it's a composite map. And as you can see, it's just very distant text. So runoff full. And then I have runoff inside. So let's see what that is. So that is the inside. So the opposite side of the, uh, the road. So that took care of this little area and this area. And what those are, and let's see what I did here. So that is runoff full, runoff inside. Runoff full, runoff inside. So those are my little blend alphas. And then this just has a bunch more textures. So I have my little hero ground texture. Then I have another one that's a little more rugged. And it's just a matter of taking textures and blending them using different maps. So like here's one of the maps I use. It's just a bunch of layering. That's what it comes down to. And then what I try to do is just eyeball the tones to get it so they all feel like they're in the same family because naturally some of these textures are warmer, some are cooler. So you have to do a little bit of a color grading to make sure they're all in the same family vibe-wise. So that was my runoff area. Now I just left these kind of empty in case I want to put something in between because it's all kind of like an order of operation. So now I have a dusty edge and let's see if I have the alpha to show you what I did there. So this dusty edge, that's my black texture just so I have nothing so it's easy to see. So pull out road dust. So pull out road dust. And what this was is right over here, right on the edge of the, uh, the runoff, I wanted like a little dust texture. So we, it's still the same texture as before, but it has a little bit more warmth. And uh, the, 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 the map for blending it is kind of just hazy and dusty. And that's why you see these texture maps kind of being used right here, where it's kind of very just on and off, kind of grainy, nothing too white, nothing too black. So it's kind of a little bit of in between. And that's all it, all it was, was just using that. And as you can see, what I did was a white, meaning whatever's inside of this shape is going to be a white color. And then I use multiply to make it all dark and just leave a little bit of, bit of white left. So that's how I got that, uh, that dust vibe to it. So that was that. That was the uh, dusty edges. Now we have the inside soil. And that was inside mountain dirt. So let me unhide that one. So inside mountain dirt. Here we go. So this was my ground texture for the dirt. And let's see here if I use, yep, say the same thing. Inside mountain dirt. And this was just, as you can see, kind of like dirty texture. That's it. And what I did here is on this one, for example, uh, the distance was 60. And then let's see if I added more distance. So this was 30. And this one doesn't have a map, but as you can see, the base has textures in here to kind of give me more of a on and off vibe. So it's not just a solid line of where this is. It kind of helps feather it off. So that's that. And then last but not least, it's my runoff hills. So let's see what that is. So the, that should be, I believe, just the edges of the rocks. And let's see what I used here. So this was runoff hills. And where is that map? Runoff hills. Oh, that's what it was. It was the outside of all this. It was all the rocks and everything like that. So that's what I did to create that one. Again, just very blends with different alphas and such. It's all a matter of opinion and however detailed you want to go with it, how crazy you want to go. And then all this has a displacement map that has the same concept as my actual hero working map. But of course, it's a composite. And let's see if this takes a minute to uh, 
to open. I'll pause my computer because the displacement is definitely all EXRs. All right, there we go. So as you can see, there's a lot of them in here. And it, now it's, to me, it's kind of like a blur because it's been a while since I did this scene. But in the moment, I just keep copying and copying the maps from the road over here that are important to what they need. And I labeled some of these, as you can see, like hills top, hills inside, and I would use the... Uh, the same alpha as the very distance text for the blending. So same concept, whatever I used for the hero masking and textures, I used for my displacement. And then last but not least, which would be the, uh, the actual mountain here. So if I grab this material, because this was its own, own element, let's see, uh, as always, they always take a minute to open because the high textures. I guess I'll pause it again. All right, so there we go. And this one was just different textures of maps from Megascans with alphas blending it. And then final, same exact stuff uh, that I used from the textures. I made the, them in the displacement with the same alphas to blend it all in. And that's that. That's as simple as this environment is. It just took some time to really dial it in, but simple shape some shells, some lofting, some basic modeling, and then some shapes to create alphas with some blending, a uh, little outside environment with some forest pack, and that's that. And then when I went to final rendering, the only thing I did do was add very aerial perspective to my atmosphere, and that kind of gave me that hazy, foggy vibe out in the distance. And I just did very sun. That's that's all I did for my lighting. Nothing very artificial, nothing fake. Just a V-Ray sun with some V-Ray atmosphere. That's it. Hope that helps someone.